unfiltered. There is magic in the mundane, bliss in the banal. The day is your dharma. I'm your host, Amaryllis, Ayurvedic health counselor, yogini, and Akashic Records reader. And this is your life, Altered. Hello to everybody. Welcome back again. I am so excited because this is my favorite holiday ever. I love this time around Halloween. I love the holiday of Halloween, but I love this time when the veil is thin. This veil between the worlds, as they call it, is thin. And so we have these celebrations of ancestries. And this is a global phenomenon. It's not just to one region. And I wanted to share some thoughts and some ideas about how you can also do this. Some of it is inspired by things that I've learned, but also by things that I do, not just on this um, holiday and this time period, but I also do these practices throughout the year. Not something that you need to do, not necessary, but always encouraged because we come from a line of people and um, honoring that, celebrating that is, is never a bad thing. It's that recognition of where we come from and to say thank you. But especially at this time of year when the veil is so thin and we have that connection beyond this realm, it's especially important and amplified our efforts and our intention to say thank you and to celebrate and um, to ask for those gifts and blessings. So the past episode, I did a lot of talking about ancestral healing and clearing and the dead and dying and things like that. It's a long episode. This one's just going to be real quick to say, hey, here's some things in the next several days that you can do. It doesn't have to be on Samhain. It doesn't have to be on Day of the Dead. I'm going to be doing my celebration on the 2nd, uh, evening of November 2nd, because that's just when my daughter happens to be back with me uh, from her dad. So we're going to be doing it on the 2nd. All right, so let's get into some thoughts and ideas about what to do in the celebration. You can take one of these ideas or you can try and do all of them if it really feels inspired to you. But bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. So pick and choose what you like, what you feel called to, and what feels like it would be doable. So before we get into these um, kind of ideas, let me just say that this isn't anything that's eerie or spooky or mournful. This is really a celebration. And so this is completely appropriate, not just for adults, but for children as well. And I mean, I highly encourage that to foster that relationship with your well ancestors in children so that they, from an early age, already see, oh, there's a connection, there's a relationship, and this is something that we do, is we honor and celebrate and give thanks. My daughter, actually, we I have a um, an ancestral box that I've painted, and so I regularly tend to this box, like making offerings and um, lighting candles and whatnot. The, you don't have to do that. But she's already been seeing for the past year, solid year, that I give offerings and... Um, blessings and I put flowers in it. So last, so she's already cultivated that, um, idea that this is something that we do. And last night, just on our own, she said, I'm going to make an offering and making soup. I said, okay. And you know, her soup is just this mix of dried herbs and spices that are in the cabinet. And she'll chop up a couple of vegetables and like mix it with water and, um, you know, so it's not something that we, she and I eat, but it's something that she makes with the intention that it's going to be sitting in front of that ancestral altar that we have that's in the kitchen. And it's going to sit there and it's an intention. She said, here you go. Enjoy. And I just think that's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. So know that this is completely appropriate and encouraged for kids. First, you'll want a space. And this can be um, a plate at your dinner table, or you could set out a mat somewhere on the floor, like in your living room or on um, 
an altar that you already have. You want it to be kind of separate, like it's its own little mat, so that it's, you know, for the ancestors, that it has this unique purpose. Put it wherever you would like, wherever it works in the home. But if you're going to be incorporating any kind of food and um, a celebration with food and drink, then having a place at your dinner table is is a beautiful way to set this up. So you want some sort of space carved out. Then at this space, you can um, add a lot of things such as candles and flowers. You can add photos. And this is where I like to bring out photos of the deceased. I don't have pictures of loved ones who have passed on in my home or anywhere that I can see them. Because in my mind, the memory of that human being lives in my memories and in my heart. But it's not something that I want to see all day, every day. And other people may have a different opinion. I'll just kind of explain my rationale and um, some teachings that I've come across. Because they're no longer in that human form. You know, yes, that human form was a big part of my life and influenced me, but that human doesn't exist anymore. And I don't want the image of who that soul used to be um, integrated into my daily life. So the memories and things are more subtle and they're kept within. But on times like this where I'm celebrating and intentionally honoring the ancestors, yes, I will bring out the photos of them, um, who they were as human beings on this planet and um, put out the photos and celebrate them and my memories of them. So this is where you can bring the photos around. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I already said candles, flowers, food and beverage. So if it's not at your table and at some other place, then make space for food and beverages. What are the foods that your ancestors loved? Be it just the people that you know that have passed on or um, things from that bloodline, that lineage. So an example is um, this Tuesday, I'm gonna be making cornbread. This is, my mom grew up in the South, my whole mom's side. They were mountain people, Southern Appalachia mountain people. And that's what you do is you make cornbread in a cast iron skillet. And she, I got her cast iron skillet when she passed away in May, um, uh, that she loved. So I remember her baking cornbread in that skillet. So I'm going to bake cornbread from that skillet. And it's, it's a, kind of celebrating her and her recipe using her cookware, but also that whole line of the Southern tradition, making the cornbread. And then for my father's side, he's from Peru, and I have no idea about cooking uh, Peruvian food, anything about that. So I'm going to end up uh, getting a little bit of takeout from a local Peruvian restaurant, getting some chicha, um, some other small dishes that I can bring back to the altar. So, you know, it you don't have to cook everything. You don't have to prepare everything. And it doesn't have to be just the things that the people you loved, loved. It can be for the whole line, for um, where they came from. Because you're not just thinking about the people that you know. You're thinking about your ancestors, the people that came before them and before them and before them and on and on and on. I mean, we can go thousands and thousands of years back. Your bloodline has been carried until you're here today. So, you know, we're not just thinking the last generation. We are also honoring and acknowledging all of the ancestors, um, the ones known as well as unknown. I always add coffee. This seems to be something that I... I mean, yes, uh, coffee's grown in Peru, but I mean, I, I kind of feel like um, coffee is always a great offering, um, <laughs> especially because it's so beloved nowadays. But then I know that um, my mom's side drank coffee, loved coffee. So I always put out a nice, fresh mug of coffee as an offering. Um, and anything that you, any other things that you can think that you would want to put on this altar to 
um, to have as an offering to say, here you go and thank you. May this nourish you as you have nourished me. I am here because of you. And if this is an event or you're kind of not just having the space, then you can also tell stories, share memories of the people that you remember and the things that have been passed down. This is a beautiful way of celebrating the ancestors. You can play music or make arts and crafts as offerings. It doesn't just have to be, you know, the candles, the flowers, the food. You can make something to place into the altar. That's personally not my favorite thing to do. I'm just, I'm not like the uh, crafty type. I would rather cook something. But for a lot of people, yes, that's right up their alley. And of course they want to create something and make it. And also children again can be incorporated here. What would you like to create to put in our ancestral uh, shrine or on the the altar tonight or um, at the seating at the table for our ancestors? By the way, they might also love to set the table for this. I know that that's something that Satya really likes to do is set the table for the ancestors and she'll make it very fancy. And so this is also a fun way to include them. Uh, Let's see. So, you know, all of these ideas and more, but then also during this time, you're, you're wanting to say a few things. You're wanting to express from your heart a few things and get into a place where you can say this from your heart, from your soul, from the deep cellular DNA memory of your bloodline, from your mother's side, your father's side. And you're going to want to express thanks for your life. You wouldn't be here without them. You'll give thanks to the land. What are the lands from which your lineage comes? Both sides, mothers and fathers. What are these native lands? The energies of these lands. There's a a consciousness and an energy to the land. So I always think about the Smoky Mountains that ancient mountain range. And then I also think about the the Andes, these, I mean, just amazing mountains and lands surrounding southern Peru. So where do your people come from? Give thanks. Especially because the people would not have survived without the lands and the abundance and nourishment from these lands. So I think that's also important. Another thing you can um, then ask from your ancestors after you've given gratitude and thanks and celebration of their lives is you can ask that they watch over you, that they guide you, and that they protect you. They were humans once and understand the human condition. And maybe you have something in particular that you're wanting assistance you can speak specifically to that. They're not like, uh, say, angelic helping spirits or um, uh, spirit guides that are animals. These used to be humans and they understand human problems in a way that maybe angels do not. So you can ask for assistance. I'm, I'm struggling with such and such and I'm asking for such and such. And I've talked about it before, and that's something that um, I keep revisiting, is that you have to ask for help from spirit. You know, any spirit guides, um, ancestors, you can't just uh, expect that help intervenes. You have to ask. It's this kind of guiding force of free will. Your free will cannot be overridden. So you have to say, I need help and please help with this. Please guide me in this. I need that help. I need that assistance. I need that guidance. And then help and support can come. If you don't ask, 
help and support and guidance cannot be given. So yes, ask for that support and that guidance. Ask that they watch over you and your lineage, your children, your children's children. Ask that they protect. And it's, um, it's really a beautiful relationship. So, you know, they're all, they're in our blood. They're always with us. They're in our blood seven generations back at least. So we want to cultivate this relationship by celebrating them, by honoring them and their lives and the things that they went through in their lives and the fact that we are here today because of them and to also say, hey, can you help me? Please make sure to have fun with this, that it is something that sparks you, that really enlivens you, and that deepens your connection to spirit and to your ancestral realm. Let this be fun and simple and easeful. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be a huge event. Even just a prayer from the depths of your heart is enough. So I sit here surrounded by my jack-o'-lanterns and getting prepared for the second and our feast. I'm excited and I would love to hear what you happen to do over the next several days as you connect and celebrate with your ancestors. Blessings to you all. Remember that spirit guides but never decides. How will you choose this hour, this day, this week at the altar of your life? Thank you so much for listening. If you feel called, subscribe to the podcast, leave a review, and share it. Also, connect with me and discover more on Instagram at Amaryllis underscore Fernandez. Until next time.